A strange humanoid creature was seen all around the northeastern United States in the summer of 2003, and then it all disappeared. Welcome to tonight's episode of Forgotten Tales, where we take a look at old classic internet urban legends and creepypastas. Tonight's story that we're going to be taking a look at is The Rake. First, we're going to read the entire legend in full, and then we'll talk about it a little, and I'll give you some of my thoughts. If you enjoy, please give this video a like and subscribe, comment below, and without further ado, here is the classic urban legend, The Rake. During the summer of 2003, events in the northeastern United States involving a strange human-like creature sparked brief local media interest before an apparent blackout was enacted. Little or no information was left intact, as most online and written accounts of the creature were mysteriously destroyed. Primarily focused in rural New York State, and once found in Idaho, self-proclaimed witnesses told stories of their encounters with a creature of unknown origin. Emotions ranged from extremely traumatic levels of fright and discomfort to an almost childlike sense of playfulness and curiosity. While their published versions are no longer on record, the memories remained powerful. Several of the involved parties began looking for answers that year. In early 2006, the collaboration had accumulated nearly two dozen documents dating between the 12th century and present day, spanning four continents. In almost all cases, the stories were identical. I've been in contact with a member of this group and was able to get some excerpts from their upcoming book. A Suicide Note, 1964 As I prepare to take my life, I feel it necessary to assuage any guilt or pain I have introduced through this act. It is not the fault of anyone other than him. For once I awoke and felt his presence, and once I awoke and saw his form. Once again I awoke and heard his voice and looked into his eyes. I cannot sleep without fear of what I might next awake to experience. I cannot ever awake. Goodbye. Found in the same wooden box were two empty envelopes addressed to William and Rose, and one loose personal letter with no envelope. Dearest Linny, I have prayed for you. He spoke your name. A journal entry, translated from Spanish. 1880. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I see his eyes when I close mine. They are hollow, black. They saw me and pierced me. His wet hand I will not sleep. His voice. Unintelligible text. A Mariner's Log, 1691. He came to me in my sleep. From the foot of my bed I felt a sensation. He took everything. 
we must return to England. We shall not return here again at the request of the rake. From a Witness, 2006 Three years ago, I had just returned from a trip from Niagara Falls with my family for the 4th of July. We were all very exhausted after a long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At about 4 a.m., I woke up thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I used the moment to steal back the sheets, only to wake him in the process. I apologized and told him I thought he got out of bed. When he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed so quickly his knee almost knocked me out of the bed. He then grabbed me and said nothing. After adjusting to the dark for half a second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting and facing away from us, there was what appeared to be a naked man or a large hairless dog of some sort. Its body position was disturbing and unnatural, as if it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by it, but more concerned as to its condition. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked into the fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a flurry of motion, the creature scrambled around the side of the bed and then crawled quickly in a flailing sort of motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds, or probably closer to five, it just seemed like a while, just looking at my husband. The creature then placed its hand on his knee and ran into the hallway, leading to the kids' rooms. I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he hurt my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it crouching and hunched over about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered in blood. I flipped the switch on the wall and saw my daughter, Clara. The creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our daughter. She was very badly injured and spoke only once more in her short life. She said... He is the rake. My husband drove his car into a lake that night while rushing our daughter to the hospital. They did not survive. Being a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first, and the local newspaper took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was never published, and the local television news never followed up either. For several months, my son Justin and I stayed in a hotel near my parents' house. After we decided to return home, I began looking for answers myself. I eventually located a man in the next town over who had a similar story. We got in contact and began talking about our experiences. He knew of two other people in New York who had seen the creature we now refer to as the rake. It took the four of us about two solid years of hunting on the internet and writing letters 
to come up with a small collection of what we believe to be accounts of the rake. None of them gave any details, history, or follow-up. One journal had an entry involving the creature in its first three pages, and never mentioned it again. A ship's log explained nothing of the encounter, saying only that they were told to leave by the rake. That was the last entry in the log. There were, however, many instances where the creature's visit was one of a series of visits with the same person. Multiple people also mentioned being spoken to, my daughter included. This led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us before our last encounter. I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night, every night, for two weeks. I would tediously scan through the sounds of me rolling around in my bed each day when I woke up. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep while blurring through the recording at eight times the normal speed. This took almost an hour every day. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was the rake. I can't listen to it long enough to even begin to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and I now believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thoughts that must have gone through my daughter's head make me very upset. I have not seen the rake since he ruined my life, but I know that he has been in my room while I sleep. I know and fear that one night, I'll wake up to see him staring at me. Okay. Wow. That, that was genuinely disturbing. Again, the story we just read was the classic anonymous tale, The Rake. This is another classic story that I have not read in a very long time. And uh, it's much scarier, really, than I recalled it being. When I was younger and I read this story, I... The concept of the rake and seeing that in my room always scared me, but I was always of the opinion that the story itself uh, really wasn't that great. But reading it again now, I, I don't really know why I felt that way, to be honest with you. I, I, I really love that story. It reminded me a lot of, uh, of alien abduction stories, actually. You know, a lot of people who... Uh, report to be abductees, you know, very often they're just in their bed, it's a normal night, a normal situation, they go to bed, and they wake up for some reason to see a strange humanoid creature in their room. Now, a lot of times uh, it doesn't get as horrible and violent as, uh, as the rake is reported to be, but sometimes bad things do happen and are reported to happen. As always, when I finish reading one of these stories, my mind immediately goes to, okay, what, what is going on here? What does this story really mean? You know, I think you could think of it as some kind of a uh, 
extraterrestrial encounter or obviously and this one's more obvious actually a crypto terrestrial encounter something that has existed on this planet for a long time obviously with uh with the little reports and uh journal fragments going all the way back to like the 1600s and stuff like that but some creature that doesn't maybe isn't fully material and maybe not all the time um, something that exists maybe on some other level or other plane of reality that for most likely malevolent reasons comes down and interacts with humanity intermittently for its own purposes. The story doesn't really give any clue as to what the rake wants, what its drive is. It really only uh, either threatens or straight up murders, apparently. So, you know, that, that maybe could have been interesting to, uh, to explore a little more. You know, try to figure out what's, what's the point of this thing. Because it's, <laughs> even when it does kill, like when it killed uh, the, the main character's daughter... You know, it's not like it, it killed her to eat her, you know. It just decided to kill her for some reason. Could it be some creature that somehow feeds off of negative energy? And so it wants to show up uh, and interact with people and scare the living Jesus out of them to then satiate itself in some way off of that? You know, almost one of the creepier options is... It's not particularly malevolent to begin with. It just really doesn't have a care for humanity. And it comes down here and it acts in ways that to itself it thinks it's just, uh, it's just really trying to amuse itself. But its form of amusement is absolutely horrific to us. And therefore we have no option but to call it how we see it, which is... Uh, a violent monstrosity. Huh. I wish there were more stories about the rake. I mean, I'm sure there are. I mean, this is this is a classic legend that's been online for a long time. So I'm sure some other people have, have written accounts. Just like Slenderman and stuff like that. Or uh, Smile Dog. <coughs> so let's talk about the rating. What, what rating would I give this story? I gotta say, I really like it, and the way it was written up made it sound really believable. It was, I mean, most of these old stories are written in a way where you're supposed to question whether or not it's real to begin with. But I really think this one did a very good job with that. You know, I love this one so much that I think I'm gonna give it a uh, four and a half out of five bones, you know? I think it deserves a full four and a half out of five. I found it genuinely creepy, genuinely interesting, and uh, just the way it was set up with a little introduction, a few historical examples, and then a longer story that really goes into the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, that was that was just really great. That was just really great. Really liked it. What do you think of this story? Do you like the rake? Do you not like the rake? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, I hope you're all having a great holiday season and uh, getting ready for the new year. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can go over to patreon.com slash clancypasta. And a huge thanks to all of my supporters on there as well as YouTube members. Let me know what classic internet urban legend you'd like me to take a look at next. And uh, I'll see you all very soon. Have a great night, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>